Hey guys, Chris from Adaptuation here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 4 from the May 2023 PUA Paper 2. If you want to see the solutions to the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and the link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the solution. Alrighty, so number four starts. Brooklyn Sal is the owner of two businesses. Brooks Technologies and Brookie Computer Supplies Limited. Okay. Brooks Technologies manufactures components used in the production of computer monitors. The forecast for sales of the components during each quarter of 2023 are presented in the following table. So we have this table down here. Now a quarter is a period of three months. Because a year has 12 months, a quarter of 12 is three. So your first quarter runs from January to March. They plan to produce 6,000, sorry, they plan to sell 6,000 units in quarter two, which goes April, May, and June. They plan to sell 8,000. Quarter three, July, August, September, they plan to sell 12,000. And in the last quarter, October, November, December, they plan to sell 16,000. Now, what is it they want us to do? Well, Brooklyn's policy is to maintain a closing inventory sufficient to cover 25% of next quarter's sales. All right. The opening inventory for the components on 1 Jan 2023 will be 1,500 units. And finally, the requirement, right? Prepare a production budget for each of the first two, sorry, a pro, yeah, for each of the first two quarters of 2023 for the components. All right. Now, if you are not familiar with budgets and you want to get a bit of a, an idea of how to do them, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check that out first and then come back here. All right. Now, for those of you who have checked out the video and want to continue, let's proceed. So they want us to do a production budget. So I'm going to pull up my format here, of course, head up properly, name of the entity, name of the statement you're preparing, and the period to which it applies, right? Now, this is like a rearrangement of your cost of, goal, cost of goods sold section from your trading account, all right? So you're going to start with your sales. So that, we're going to add the closing stock, and that's going to give us the number of units we need available for sale. If you subtract your opening stock from that, you're going to get the quantity you need to produce, okay? So... Sales in quarter one is 6,000 as per the question. Now, the closing inventory is 25% of next quarter sales. The next quarter sales is 8,000. I'll put it in here. Uh, did I not put it in? Yeah, there you go. Right, sorry, wrong button. <laughs> right? 25% of 8,000 is 2. 6 plus 2 is 8,000. So we, we need to have 8,000 units available for sale, right, in quarter one. Right? We plan to sell 6 and keep 2 for closing stock. Now, we do start the year with 1,500 units on hand, which means we only have to produce 6,500, okay? Now, in quarter two, the closing inventory is 25% of the next quarter sales. The next quarter sales is 12,000, which I'll just put here temporarily, right? You don't need to put that in, but I'm putting it there for the sake of illustration. 25% of which is 3,000, all right? Let's take that piece out here, close back in. Now, eight and three is 11, and the Opening in stock for, for quarter two is quarter one's closing stock, which was 2,000. And 11 minus 2 is 9,000, right? Okay, so again, if you need to check out how to do production budgets or any type of budgets for CSEC POA, and maybe even keep, you can always check that link I put in the description, okay? All right, let's take a look at A part two. So A part two reads, the selling price of one component is $65. The cost of producing one component is 50 Calculate the markup applied by Brooks Technologies for a component. Okay, so markup, as you should know, is gross profit over cost price multiplied by 100. Now, the gross profit is selling price minus cost price. The selling price is $65, the cost price is 50. So we have 65 minus 50 over 50 by 100. 65 minus 50, of course, is 15. 15 over 50 by 100 is 30%. Simple and straightforward. Let's check out part B. So they start us off by saying on the 31st of December, 2022, Brooklyn discovered the following errors in the books of Brookie Computer Supplies Limited. Error A, the balance of 12,436 for office furniture was recorded as 12,364. That's too low, that's an understatement, okay? Error B, an item of capital expenditure had been recorded as revenue expenditure. Now what that means, capital expenditure is expenditure on non-current assets equipment, machinery, motor vehicles, and the like. Revenue expenditure is any expenditure that is not capital expenditure. Basically, the things you'll see in the income statement, salaries, wages, insurance, rent, the carriage outwards, and that whole long list, right? So we have a, a misclassification here. So that's going to cause a, an issue. 
a receipt, an item of capital expenditure have been overstated in the books. Well, that's the opposite of A. Overstating means it's too high. Okay, so let's see. B part one, complete the following table by putting ticks in the correct columns to indicate the effect of the errors on the non-current assets and profit for the year. An example has been provided for you. So I'm going to show you the table here and I'm going to pull up my basic version of it, all right? So the example they did was part A, where the balance of 12436 for office furniture was recorded as 12364. So what that means is that the non-current assets would be understated. And according to the example, this would have no effect on profit. Now, the reason I'm not in total agreement with that is because depreciation is calculated on non-current assets. And depending on if they calculated depreciation on the 12364, which was the incorrect figure, that would mean that the depreciation was also understated. But again, I'm going a bit too far beyond the scope of the question. Let's just keep it simple. They're taking it this way that the depreciation wasn't taken into consideration. Okay, no problem. So that's the example. So part B says an item of capital expenditure had been recorded as revenue expenditure. So what that means is, let's say, for example, they bought a motor vehicle for $10,000. But instead of recording it in motor vehicle, they put it in motor expenses account, like motor vehicle running expenses account. So your, your, your expenses, your revenue expense would be too high. Now, what that means is two things. So one, they didn't record it in the motor vehicles account. So again, the, the non-current assets would be understated. And your net profit would also be understated because you would have put a figure in the expense section in your income statement that should not be there. So your expenses would be too high and your profit would be too low. Okay. The last item is an item of capital expenditure has been overstated. Now that's kind of self-explanatory, right? If you overstate capital expenditure, the effect on non-current assets is that it is overstated. And again, following on from the example they give us for error A, it means that there's no effect on the profit for the year, right? Again, like I, like I say, if the non-current assets are overstated and you calculate depreciation on that figure, your depreciation expense would be too high and your net profit would be understated. But again, I don't think that that's what they were going for, okay? Let's take a look at B part two. It says, identify two payment methods that Brooklyn can use to pay suppliers of Brooks Technologies for tools purchased on credit. Okay, so two payment methods. You can either pay with cash or check or bank transfer, all right? Of course, that list is not exhaustive. I would invite you to put in the comment section below any other payment methods that you could come up with. Okay, let's take a look at item C for this question. Okay, it says Brooklyn maintains a full set of books of account. A purchases ledger control account and a sales ledger control account are prepared at the end of every month. State two uses of control accounts in the accounting process. Okay, well, I'll give you three. They summarize an entire ledger, which makes it easier to double check the accuracy of double entry and easier to find errors. They help to find errors more efficiently. All right. Now, the last part of the question gives us a little table. The following balances were extracted from the books of Brookie Computer Supplies Limited. We have refunds to trade receivables, contra items transferred to purchases ledger. Now, that's a set off. For those of you who know what set offs are, that's what a set off is. Bad debt, 700, and interest charge on overdue accounts, 2,600. Now, the setup here kind of made me think, okay, we're going to plug these into a control account. Now, if you want to know how to do control accounts from scratch, I'm going to put a link up there. Sorry, a card up there and a link in the description below. But but look at what they brought for you, uh, right? So, they, they brought us to record the balances above as they would appear in the sales ledger receivables control account. And they give you debit entry, credit entry as the columns. And well, you have to put the figures here. Um, I'm not a fan of this format. I know what needs to be done, but I don't know that the average POA student would know. And I don't think it's a fair thing to put. I think they should have put a T account and have you put them on a particular side. All right. Again, just my opinion. Okay. So first of all, let's let's deal with the refunds to trade receivables. So that would go on the debit side, right? Because when you first receive money from your receivables, that would go on the credit side. If you have to give them a refund, you kind of do the opposite. And the opposite of a credit is a debit. Okay. Now, contra items transferred to purchases ledger. Right. That's the set off. That's going to go on the credit side. Uh, bad debts. That's going to go on the credit side as well. And interest charge on overdue accounts. That's going to go on the debit side. And that's about it for this question. All right, guys. So there you have it. That's the solution for question four from the May 2023 POA Paper 2. 
If you have any further questions on any of the parts of this item here, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you whenever chance. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website for some free POA helpers. Any of you guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.